Hi there and welcome back. Let's continue with the immune system. So one of the important aspects in immune system is the thymus or the thymus gland. After forming in your bone marrow, T cells travel to this small organ called thymus. Uh, they are behind your breast bone to mature into the uh, cells that can tell one antigen or the other antigen. They can uh, discriminate and distinguish amongst the antigens. It is here also where they learn not to attack your own body. Okay, so otherwise it leads to autoimmune disease. So this is the, the thymus that we have seen before at various uh, slides that were presented before. So besides thymus, when it comes to the immune system, there are secondary lymph organs that play a role um, in uh, generating the immune response. So that includes uh, spleen, tonsils, adenoids, appendix, the small pyre patches in uh, the intestine where mature T cells are stored. These organs can also help uh, sift out germs and dead cells the way your lymph nodes do. Remember I was saying that uh, these organs are also doing the functions of a, a lymph node just like kidney does. Uh, your, immune system, your immune cells might meet up here to get a closer look at the possible threats and figure out the right plan of action. So here we can see that there is a link between the lymphatic and immune system. So this is our immune system and the secondary lymph organs are adenoids, tonsils, spleen, uh, pile patches, appendix. Okay, they will play the role. Memory cells, as the name suggests, for the first time when the antigen comes, it takes a while to form the antibody, but then uh, the leftover B and T cells, technically speaking called memory cells, they know that, okay, we know that this is not good, so let's get rid of it, whatever the germs it may be. So that's why it is labeled as fancy name given memory cells, B cell and T cell. So the immune system, they complete, it's a, it's a complementary system. Uh, there are about more than 30 plus proteins. They work together in a cascade, like a teamwork, where one triggers the next, um, and so on and so forth. And what they try to do, working together, they try to kill the germs. Either they mark them or they ask for their help, uh, invite some others. Uh, to create and form the antibodies that is needed to get the job done. Uh, they work and create a complex or the antibodies to get rid of the antigen. Okay, and we talked about the innate or the uh, acquired response. So they just, uh, there is a domino effect. They, they work together, they complement each other. Cytokines, they are like messengers. So different kinds of cells can make these messengers. Some cytokines trigger and focus the immune response. They might tell white blood cells where to go or how to destroy a particular germ. One type called interferons can slow or stop a virus from making copies of itself. Cytokines also tell your body to shut it down after the threat is gone. So you have a bacteria and you have a cytokine. So this is, we are saying all goes well, immune system is working well, uh, fighting, getting rid of the bacteria, virus, fungi, name it, foreign invaders, so on and so forth. What if something goes wrong? We, we hear many times from our friends and relatives that, oh, I, I am allergic to peanuts. I cannot eat peanuts. So that is an example of someone is not able, the immune system of that particular person is not able to keep up with or fight the peanuts if they eat, okay? So it is not that life-threatening, but just simple example of allergic 
allergic response that has to do with the way our immune system works. So when in our system, when we have a system where it doesn't, the immune system of course, when it doesn't react strong enough to a problem, then it is called immunodeficiency disorder, right? So something like AIDS is an example of immunodeficiency disorder. Autoimmune, we know the autoimmune where body mistakenly attacks own tissues unable to figure out we were re talking about the thymus one of the functions that thymus does is can recognize domestic or the foreign antigen and when body fails to do so body would uh, generate autoimmune response and uh, we know that for example rheumatoid arthritis or uh, Hashimoto's thyroid disease or Crohn's disease or type 1 diabetes, lupus, these are the examples of autoimmune response where it doesn't work the way it should, right? So this is typical that uh, depending upon the level of complications, the rheumatoid arthritis may lead to uh, different complications. Now it is said that like lymphatic system, in immune system also there are hundreds of disorders, a laundry list. We are not going to look at every one of those. Even in the primary immunodeficiency disorders, it is believed that there are more than 100 primary immunodeficiency diseases okay, that can prevent the immune system from working the way it should. HIV or mono that we typically hear are nothing but the infections that is because of immune system not working properly. And needless to say the leukemia, lymphoma or myeloma, all the cancer that we talk about are ultimately because the immune system is not, is actually out of control and it just, uh, the immune cells grow uncontrollably. And as a result, the leukemia or lymphoma or myeloma and cancers like that happens. Sepsis, simply speaking, it's an overwhelming response of your body's immune system to an infection. But not only could it damage the organ, it could also lead to unfortunate death. And medications, especially when people unfortunately may have to have a liver transplant or kidney transplant, medications sometimes can have a side effect as well because the body is not reacting to and unfortunately rejecting to the transplant process that a, a person has had. So that can also uh, lead to complications. And of course, it can lead to risk of infection and you name it. Okay, so enough on the lymphatic and immune system. I'll come back with another important aspect to cover this system. Take care. Bye bye.